Hey everyone, this is Richard, CEO of Altfins. In this trading video, I will cover Bitcoin and Solana technical analyses and look what's ahead. And also, what would be my trade setup? Um, so, both of these uh, were on our technical, I'm sorry, yeah, technical analysis section. They were on our hot list until we took it off today. And the reason for that, let's go back to the screener. The reason for that is uh, that they're very close to our near-term price targets. So let's take a look at um, Bitcoin. Let's first take a look at the trend for both. Bitcoin is in an uptrend on a medium-term basis, neutral on the long-term basis, and Solana is in a strong uptrend across the board. So clearly, uh, we want to be buying these two um, at the right entry points, uh, swing trading them um, as they continue to uh, trend higher. Trends have the tendency to continue, and that's why trend trading works. Um, and so we want to get involved at the right, right price point. Um, let's look at Bitcoin in greater detail here. Um, six months chart here. Let's add some default analytics or indicators. I don't need the 50 day moving average, just the 200 day moving average is enough. And then we have the RSI and MACD. Okay, uh, from this chart, well, let's go ahead and actually let's open up a trading view chart. Blow it up here. Okay. Now we're ready. So as you can see, um, our call has been that it's been trading in a range in the side view channel, somewhere between 60,000 and about 72,000. So we, you know, we are buyers at that 60,000 or so, close to 60,000, or maybe now to the 200 day moving average, 61,000. That's what I like to buy it. And, and swing traded with the expectation that you will once again uh, revisit the resistance at 72,000. Okay, we look at where the resistance is. You know, it's right here around 72,000. This is where it's gotten rejected one, two, three, four times clearly. And then the support here is, you know, somewhere somewhere around here, right? This is where it found support, one, two, three. It broke, but quickly regained that level, four, five, again broke it and regained it. So that 60,000 clearly is a good support level, 72,000 is a resistance level. Now we're getting close to that 72,000. In fact, if we um, zoom in, okay. Today, you know, the upper wick of this candle around 70,000, you know, was only a couple of thousand dollars away from that resistance zone. So at this point, the upside potential to that resistance zone is only uh, maybe three percentage points. So I don't like, you know, such a small potential upside. Um, well, you know, downside obviously is down to 60,000. It's um, so, you know, what happens if we breaks about 72,000? That's where I would also buy. So there's two scenarios where I get, get involved again. Um, either it pulls back close to that 60, 61,000 support zone where I buy it back. Or if it breaks above the $72,000, that would to me indicate that the buyers have now completely soaked up the supply from the sellers around this level where clearly several times the sellers have been taking profits and offloading uh, around this level. So we need to break above that level to once again attack the all-time highs of $79,000, which uh, we saw um, back uh, in, well, can't remember the date, but um, that will be our next target after that. 
that would be a 10% potential upside if we break above the $72,000, right? Um, you know, a couple of things that um, to keep in mind, today is actually 100 days since the last halving happened, right? So about three months since the halving happened in uh, April, I believe, and, and at the end of April, so three months ago or 100 days. And typically, the benefits of the halving, which is basically reduction of new Bitcoin supply, because halving essentially means that the miners are getting rewarded half as much Bitcoin uh, fees as they were previously for mining Bitcoin, right? So new supply coming to the market uh, from miners uh, declines by half. And, and the benefits of that redu reduced supply uh, supply reduction typically begin to play out 100 days after that halving, which is today, between 100 days and the 400 days after halving. So in the next 300 days, I know it's still a long period, you know, it's about almost a year, but this is when we could start seeing some benefits of that. On top of that, um, benefiting Bitcoin and really potentially the whole crypto space is the very likely improved um, regulatory environment in the U.S. after the presidential elections. No matter who, whether it's Trump or Harris, both, uh, clearly Trump has indicated that um, he wants to be more favorable um, uh, to, to crypto and in fact announced yesterday at, at a crypto Bitcoin conference in Nashville that he would um, fire Gensler, the SEC uh, director, who's been one of the uh, uh, one of the you know individuals who's uh, who's uh, held back crypto adoption in the U.S. Frankly, and he also Trump also announced that uh, he would um, um, make or add Bitcoin to one of the reserves uh, currencies, reserve currencies. Of course, you know, what Trump says and what he does uh, could be two completely different things. You know, previously he was very opposed to, to crypto and called it uh, vapor. So, so this could be just rhetoric, but um, I do sense that there is going to be a changing environment. And uh, now with Kamala Harris being the, Biden, uh, being the Democratic candidate, um, it, it appears that even the Democrats are... Um, looking to be a more accommodative uh, or friendly to uh, crypto industry. So either way it goes, the regulatory environment should uh, improve post the elections in November. And, and with that, I think the adoption and innovation in the space will accelerate even further. So uh, that's a positive on that front. All right. Um, and then, uh, by the way, if you do make some drawings to your uh, charts you can also save them uh, save this trading chart so i'll say btc uh, let's just give it a day 27 29 7 2024 okay i save that and then in the future then i can either load it back here or um or create a new one right so this way if I close this tab and I move on to Solana and then I go back to Bitcoin, then I will see my saved chart as the default chart along with the drawings that I had made and saved. All right? So that's a, that's a good uh, tip for you. Uh, and you can create and save as many uh, charts as you, as you want. Uh, moving on to Solana. Solana is, uh, was also on our hot list. Um, until today when we removed it. And, and it's a similar reason. Um, Solana, actually, let's go to the technical analysis tab here. And uh, first of all, again, it's in the strong uptrend across the short term, medium term, and long term. And, um, and let's take a look at what's going on in this technical analysis chart. So, uh, we were we put it on our hot list when the price broke out of this descending triangle, and after that it has had a nice 
about 15% gain and reached the high of about 193 or so today. So it's gotten really close to that $200 target or resistance or target price that we've had. And again, it's a level where the price has gotten rejected a couple of times um, back in, I believe this is in March and April. So this is a level that we have to be mindful of. And uh, the reality is that it's very likely to get rejected here again, especially since it is getting slightly overbought. It's not quite there yet. So again, in this case, where I want to get involved um, is, well, let's pull that back, back up here. I want to get involved either when the price breaks above the $200 or, or so, 205 um, uh, dollar level to indicate that it's completely absorbed all the sellers supply from sellers and it's ready to march higher um, or if it pulls back again to $160 which now really it's becoming uh, a support zone you know now that the resistance zone of $160 has been broken once broken that resistance zone becomes a support zone that's a concept known as polarity, something that we teach in our lessons, I believe in lesson two um, or three. So in this case, I would be either entering this uptrend when the price pulls back to the $160 level or so, which is now support, or when it breaks above the $200 levels. Right now, it's kind of you know close to that resistance zone, not a whole lot of upside left here. Um, so it's not really my hot trade at the moment. So let's see what happens you know, from now on. Where can it go after it breaks $200? Well, um, let's take a look at where was the all-time high. The all-time high price, and you can find this, by the way, under the indicators tab here. The all-time high was about $260, which is 30% uh, of 29% away. And that was back in November of 2021. Wow, over, well, close to three years ago. All right, so that's where it's gonna go if it breaks about $200. Maybe not in a one quick swoop, uh, but gradually I think that would be the medium term target. Uh, the near term target, let's uh, blow up this chart again. Let's take a look at a longer history to see, you know, where were the peaks peaks and valleys in the past around this level. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I just wanna create a little more space for the price chart, okay? So here we are currently, okay, here we go. Currently at about 186 right now. It was as high as 193 or so four. But anyway, back in, November or late 2021, we saw that there was a couple of peaks around 215, and then again a couple of tops around 240, and then the max was 260. So you know, call it 215, 240, 260 are the next few resistance zones. So you know, we might see, obviously, even in uptrend, you see some ups and downs, profit taking, and then and then people get involved again, and again we break higher highs and so forth so but there's a potential from current levels or if it breaks about the $200 um, it could very well over the next few months um, move up 30% to 260 which is the all-time high and maybe go higher after that all right um, again I encourage you to take a look at some of these uh, first of all you leverage your technical analysis uh, for getting some quick trading ideas for the top 60, 65 altcoins out there, um, but also leverage the crypto education course that we have here. It really is great for beginners, but even for intermediate traders, teaches you, you know, the key, the foundation of technical analysis, how to find support and resistance, um, how to, there's about, uh, basically, there's specifically seven trading strategies that we uh, teach as well um moment uh trend and swing trading strategies uh, including short selling and, and then also we teach risk management uh, as well very critical you know to 
to understand where uh, you should put your stop loss levels, uh, how to appropriately um, how uh, to set how, how to appropriately set the the, pri the 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 trade size as well, um, and also how to use the reward to risk ratio of two to one um, as well. All right, well, I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, please email me at invest at .com. And good luck trading. Keep in mind that this video has been uh, made for informational purposes only, not meant to be financial advice and do your own research.